bit, I will show images of multi-system atrophy. Multi-system atrophy is a neurodegenerative disease that is difficult to diagnose clinically. And unfortunately, the imaging findings are not clear-cut either. Clinically, there are three subtypes. MSA-C, with atrophy of the inferior olive, pons and cerebellum. Then there's the one with Parkinsonism, with atrophy of the striate and substantia nigra. And if there are mainly autonomic symptoms, it's the form that was previously called shy Drager. In multi-system atrophy, there's abnormal alpha synuclein, like in Parkinson's disease, but in Parkinson's disease it was only found in the neurons, and in multi-system atrophy it's in both the neurons and the oligodendrocytes. And the clusters of misfolded alpha synuclein in the oligodendrocytes are called pep lantos bodies. So not Lewy bodies in the oligodendrocyte, but pep lantos bodies. And on imaging, you can find, because of the degeneration and iron deposition in the pretamen, low signal on the T2-weighted images in the lentiform nucleus, sometimes a pretaminal rim, and also hyperintensity of pantine fibers and atrophy of pons and cerebellum. This hyperintense pretaminal rim of which this is another example, is often described in literature and also the iron deposition, which is better visible on susceptibility weighted images. But the hyperintense pretaminal rim is not exclusive for multi system atrophy when it comes to a 3 Tesla scan, because on 3 Tesla it might also be a normal finding. This is a healthy volunteer in her. 40s on 3 Tesla, and this is the same healthy volunteer on 1.5 Tesla. So it might be normal on 3 Tesla. So don't diagnose hyperintense pretaminal rim and MSA on 3 Tesla, only on 1.5. The hyperintense fibers in the pons are the transverse pontine fibers and the fibers going from anterior to posterior, giving it the appearance of a hot cross bun, and that is easy to see. Sometimes there's also hyperintensity of the middle cerebellar peduncle, but unfortunately this is not the case in the majority of patients. So if you see it, you can suggest multi-system atrophy, but if it's not visible, the absence of a hot cross bun sign does not exclude multi-system atrophy. You can also find atrophy of the pons with flattening and atrophy of the cerebellum. So to diagnose this you have to know what is appropriate for the age and if available compared to previous MRIs of the patient. And on this sagittal T2 weighted images of a patient with multi-system atrophy you can see the difference between multi-system atrophy and the previously discussed progressive supranuclear palsy, also of Parkinson plus syndrome, because in the progressive supranuclear palsy, there is selective midbrain atrophy, whereas in MSA, there is pantine atrophy. And there's a very interesting article that is already 20 years old from neuroradiology, where they took a small group of patients with different subtypes of multi-system atrophy and they determined a lot of imaging parameters and what they found was that although there were clinically different subtypes the MRI findings overlapped independent of the clinical subtype. So there's also pantine atrophy in a patient with MSAP and there's also striatal atrophy in a patient with the previous Scheidt-Rager. Thanks for watching, until next time, and then we will talk about pantocerebellar hypoplasia and probably with a separate introduction of the embryology of the posterior fossa because otherwise it's going to be too long.